What's up guys and welcome to my unboxing and review of this, the Sony Vio Fit 14A. So this is a convertible 2-in-1 uh, tablet stroke laptop from Sony. So it, it, this particular model has a 14-inch 1080p touchscreen LED backlit panel uh, with an Intel Core i5 4200U uh, Haswell chip which runs at 1.6 GHz turbo boost to 2.6 with 3 MB of cache. Um, it also features a 1TB SSHD, which is a solid state hard drive, so a hybrid type drive. Um, and this um, particular model would be aimed for the sort of um, performance, budget, portability type uh, market because for a Core i5 um, Ultrabook type thing, it is pretty, uh, it's a pretty good price. It retails in the UK for around £700, although you can pick up quite a bit less uh, in other places. I picked mine up for about 600 from PC World, so I'll leave a link down below to, uh, to that. Um, but it, it just comes in at under two centimeters at the thickest part of the laptop, which makes it um, in a sort of portability uh, category because that is obviously a pretty pretty thin, uh, thin package. And um, its performance, um, I've been using it for a couple of days now, and um, a mixed bag in terms of that and we'll get onto that a little bit later on but uh, I filmed the unboxing a couple of days ago so I'm going to go go ahead and show you guys that um, but yeah this is a uh, two-in-one so laptop stroke tablet and that's the feature that really stood out to me and that's why uh, I went ahead and bought this so I'll let you guys know whether it was worth all that money in this part of the review we're going to have a look at the design of, of, the, of the laptop and be comparing it to the MacBook Air here. It's a 13 inch MacBook Air and I'm well, I'm well aware that these are not um, uh, performance wise they're not the same or in terms of they're not in the same bracket if you like because this costs almost double the price. The best Core i5s though that is to be said and this is a couple of generations back um, as it happens. So we're actually going to have a look at the design, um, the build quality and some of the ports and just give you a tour of the device see what it's like. Start off with the Sony Vio. It's got a nice brushed aluminium uh, finish uh, I do quite like this design, I picked this one, uh, it's got a di uh, diamond cut Vio logo. Um, let's just um, have a look around the um, sides. So at the back it's got a volume rocker up and, up and down. At this side we have the power button, the ethernet which uh, extends because it's a uh, full size ethernet will not fit in the body, a uh, USB 3 and an SD card reader uh, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. We've also got our speaker here, one of them, and we've got our LED activity lights here, which go here. Um, we've got um, the NFC logo here. This device is equipped with NFC. A Windows uh, um, sticker. We've got our rubber feet, which are good for um, working on a desk surface. And we've got our rubber lip here, just to keep um, these three keep it uh, securely in place, so you don't slip and slide whilst using the laptop. And finally on the other side we've got our Sony Vio uh, charging port, this is a Sony Vio cable. We've got our exhaust uh, and our HDMI out, USB 3.0 another one, and a, uh, the other speaker. So in comparison to that we'll have a look at the MacBook Air. Now I'd rather show you the MacBook Pro but uh, because um, I don't have that at the moment we can have a look at this. Um, so this is the uh, MacBook Air and we've got the SD card. USB 2.0, which would be a 3.0 of the latest models. Of course, these are more updated every single time, but Thunderbolt, uh, same idea on the back, and then you know, the same. Uh, MagSafe power, which I do actually like. I like that a lot. Um, and you've got the USB 2 and 3.5 mm headphone jack. And on the MacBook Pro, you've got um, uh, a button which it gives you the LEDs of the battery life, which I really like. Microphone here, and a couple more. You've got the Ethernet on the MacBook, you've got CD drive. Um, some bits and pieces and what else. Um, but that's just for reference. Now the MacBook Air, as you can see, is thinner, but only just. Um, of course this looks um, um, wider when on a desk because it's got the rubber feet, but as you can see here they are pretty much um, uh, similar, of similar thickness. So it's not that, that much. Um, yeah, it's, a, it's quite a bit quite a bit thicker actually this is only by we'll put this aside for now because that's all we needed it for really um, but let's have a look at the Vio now we're gonna have a look at the um, um, flip capabilities as well 
uh, let's just lock it. So we're in laptop mode at the moment. Um, just keep it as this. See the backlit keyboard comes on nicely, a nice 1080p panel, which is always nice to see. I do like seeing a high resolution display. We've got the webcam up there, and I believe that is, um, uh, you know, your um, sensors, your sen light sensors that determine what brightness to put on, what brightness, etc., etc. And there'll be a microphone concealed in here somewhere. Um, you've got your Sony Vite Assist button, which I have used once um, because I can't remember exactly, but it just brings up basically Windows help, and then if you need more help, you go on to the troubleshooting by Sony. Um, you've got your Intel Core i5 sticker, very nice, very um, premium looking, and um, your nice bio logo here as well, and Sony here. Uh, you've got your instructions here, which are um, which are just sort of power the display off. Which are um, you remove that you got your, uh, Windows button here when using in tablet mode, and your Sony logo, and that's that's about it in terms of um, what's here. Now let me demonstrate to you the the um, flip capabilities of this machine. So you just release it here by pressing this, um, and we will flip it over. It does look pretty cool for the first time, but uh, I assure you that does wear off after some time. Yeah, you're in tablet mode now, and we've gone through the um, the tablet capabilities, or at least it will come through later on in the video. Um, but yeah, it's it's a tablet, and that's all there is to be said. Um, it is a slight nice angle here because you've got the rubber feet, and you've also got two layers of aluminium here, so it gives you a little bit of a tilt angle towards you, which is nice. Um, but, but sorry, back into laptop mode with the release. Just flip it back around and uh, lock it. There you go. It, it does look pretty slick. You go to your meeting or go to school or whatever it is. Just, just uh, go there, release, and then, yeah, tablet. It's pretty cool. You do get some funny looks, of course. Um, using it on the train, being like, wow, what is that? Some witchcraft. But yeah, it is, it's cool. And um, you get used to it. And um, I don't think I could go back to a traditional laptop anymore once I've seen the capabilities of a two-in-one. So that's just a bit of an overview of the design. We'll go over the build quality now. Um, it's, uh, I mean, it's what you'd expect for a sort of um, budget performance uh, machine. As you can see, that there's quite a bit of bend in the middle. You know, um, around the edges, it's good. It's good, good quality uh, aluminium, but. It's not a unibody like like the MacBooks are. So if you you can just sort of bend it here, as in you see how much give there is in that. Not a big problem for me. I noticed it initially, but I don't anymore because, of course, I went from the MacBook Pro. Um, you do notice that it's not it's just not put together as well as you might expect. Um, but then, of course, uh, it's not it's not the most um, uh, premium laptop in the world. So. You, you've got to compromise a little bit, especially um, with the price you're paying. So, yeah, but other than that, on, on the, uh, when it's closed closed up, it does look um, pretty premium and it, it, it feels pretty pretty good as well. So it comes in just under 2 kilograms, 1.96 to be precise, which is um, not a big issue for me, to be honest, because I carry it around in a rucksack, so the, the weight is well distributed and it's not a big issue, but uh, uh, for some people it might be, you might be better off with uh, a really much lighter MacBook where you sacrifice the performance a little bit and the price of course. So yeah, that's just been a, a bit of an overview of the design and the build quality and I hope that helps. I hope that helps uh, you inform your decision. Now on to the next part of the review. In this part of the review, we're actually going to take a look at the keyboard and the trackpad. Now, these are quite important features to look for when buying um, uh, when buying a laptop, especially the keyboard. That's uh, quite a big important one for me because a lot of the work you'll be doing on a laptop is word processing. Um, especially if you if you use a desktop PC as well, then it's going to be a lot more um, sort of the on the go work. Um, so the laptop um, itself is pretty thin. That means it doesn't have you know a huge keyboard uh, as in in terms of depth uh, these are these keys don't travel t too far but they're um, as I've been finding out over the past few days they are actually pretty good it's a pretty good keyboard I'm pretty pleased with it if you just give you a quick demo here of uh, the typing this review 
of the Sony Vio Fit 14A. Now I'm not the fastest typer in the world, but even I find this pretty pretty good and reasonably fast to type with. Uh, I make few few errors on this because uh, the keys are nicely spread out, um, just like a MacBook. Um, sorry to keep referring to that, but it is the laptop that I've come from, so it is um, you know quite quite a similar experience if you like. It doesn't feel as solid as a MacBook that I have to say, but um, it definitely, as in terms of the keys, it, they feel just as um, well organized. And the trackpad, not much to say really, smooth, fast, and you can change your how fast it goes, and um, it's got, you know, you can uh, touch anywhere on the, on the um, trackpad and it will, you know, touch. Uh, and you've got your right hand click as well. So that's pretty standard. Again, it's standard uh, standard, and it's uh, similar to what you find on a MacBook. Um, but that's it. That's all I have to say really about the keyboard. You've got your, sorry, you've got your functions uh, all there and everything's there. I would have liked to see um, a adjustable backlight on this. Um, as it happens, it's only when you engage the keyboard that the backlight turns on. Uh, and that's okay. No, I've got no problem with that, but I would have liked to have seen um, adjustable backlight as you find on a MacBook. But uh, it's not a big problem to me. I would, and this in this way, it will save you it'll save you battery because it will disengage when you're not using it. So um, that's about it in this department. Uh, and uh, let's move on. So the next part we're going to actually have a look into is how good is this uh, touch screen? So as you know, this is a two-in-one. So this is a tablet as well, and. Um, well, this is one of my favourite features: is the touch screen. Um, what, what else can you say about it? It's a, it's a touch screen. It's very responsive. Um, it's glass, so um, yeah, it's going to be very responsive. Um, I just demo it a little bit. Um, the Sony Vio. I've got the I don't know. It's called Vio Paper. I'm not a big fan of these features. I don't tend to use them, but I'll just to demonstrate to you guys um, what it's like. And I actually believe the 13-inch um, version has uh, a stylus that comes with a digitizer digitizer stylus that comes with it. Um, this one doesn't, but we're gonna we're gonna um, take a look at it anyway. Let's see, just try and uh, um, new notebook plain. Okay, uh, just skip all this. And then just to show you guys what the how you know good the touchscreen is, how it draws or whatever. You know that's yes, yeah, it's, it's lagging a little bit here, but um, you know that's that's what it is like. Um, I would expect that to be a little bit faster, to be honest. But yeah, not bad. I don't know who'd use this feature particularly, but you know it's good. It looks pr looks pretty um pretty advanced actually. Um, just having a look at it now. You've changed the line. Um, I use all the Adobe programs mostly. So if I would be designing anything. I wouldn't be using this. Uh, on the subject of that, um, I just might as well just uh, show you guys um, what space, for example, Photoshop looks on this. I've only got the trial at the moment. This uh, this actually does come with uh, Photoshop Elements, Elements 12. Um, I don't use that particularly, but um, I've got CC 2014, which is still a trial at the moment uh, until I can get my um, the full the full version on here. So this is actually, I was uh, editing some photos the other day and I was really impressed to be honest because it loads them, I was um, off the SSD, uh, uh, it's not the SSD, the SD card rather, um, I was loading them off the SD card and flicking through, it was really fast and the ones I wanted just open with Photoshop and yeah it was um, pretty pretty good, pretty fast and um, nice and responsive. I was actually uh, on the train and doing that and so it was, you know, it was uh, pretty good. So that was a pretty quick launch there from Photoshop. Um, I believe it'll have to ask me for to continue the trial. Uh, yeah, there we go. Just yeah. Uh, sorry, no. Uh, continue trial. There we go. Um, so we're in, into Photoshop now. Uh, just I don't know. Not much I can really show you. Yeah, I don't have many files on here. But yeah, just just to show you what Photoshop looks like on a 14-inch 1080p uh, tablet, if you like. So that's about it, really. I mean. There's nothing much else to to show you guys. There's a, there's a button here. Um, it's got the webcam here. That's a nice feature. I don't use it particularly, but it's there. Um, and yeah, that's really about it in terms of the touchscreen and tablet capabilities. 
um, I could just show you the auto rotate uh, it works pretty fast you know you can use it in portrait if you want there we go portrait I don't know how well you can see that but it's there back into uh, normal and um, we can pick our, you know the the keyboard will appear I feel quick browse if that's uh, that's what um, interests you guys I'll go into the aviation explain YouTube channel page so uh, as of today we've got 2009 subscribers hooray and half a million views almost so that, that's good nice to see the channels uh, growing quite a bit um, and yeah so all your videos here flash works fine and it's nice to see flash on a tablet so if, for example although YouTube would redirect you to the mobile page but even still let's have a look at a video um, I don't know here we go 767 landing at Charlie Yankee Yankee Zulu which is I've forgotten um, which is Pearson Toronto there we go so yeah it, I've got auto HD running so and ad block running so um, that should be okay Let's full screen it once it turns into HD which should be pretty soon and we'll see what the speakers are like as well you'll hear the sound in a minute as the aircraft approaches. Uh, I'm actually very impressed with the speakers. Um, it's dual speakers, so um, and they are pretty loud actually. Um, good quality sound, good bass, and yeah, there's not that much more I can say about them. Well, actually I could say they don't get muffled. They don't get muffled very easily, which is good. Always good to see. Um, I hope this auto HD sometime soon. Oh no. One second, guys. As you can hear that horrible sound, but the uh, um, yeah. There we go. Let's see that, uh, and you can see the video is now playing back on HD. Nice sound, that one, yeah. Oh, this is so cool. This is all the HD contact needs to happen. Um, yeah, but it is nice to be able to use a 1080p 14 inch um, touchscreen tablet. Using it in tablet mode, I usually use it, you know, when you're lying down in bed or when you're on uh, on a train or plane or whatever, uh, unless you have business class. But uh, for mo for most of us, if you're using it on a plane, you've got that problem. If you use it in laptop mode, if you use a normal laptop, either you have the screen. And I'll just demonstrate to you here. Either you have the screen um, just sort of like this, and you're practically unable to use it or you have it properly extended and risk, risk it getting crushed by the person as they recline their seat behind uh, in front of you um, so I like to use it as a tablet um, when traveling on, on the, in those type of um, places where uh, you don't actually have much room because uh, it's you know, it's just more convenient um, so yeah that's 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 uh, quite quite a nice feature tablet the tablet um, but if you're using it on your lap, it can get a little bit warm, um, and the exhaust is just here. So just keep that in mind if you're planning to do most uh, to do heavy work uh, in tablet orientation if you're using it on your lap. Um, but that part of the review is over, and we're going to have a look at something else now. And now onto a really important part of the review, and that is battery life. And this is important to anyone looking to buy a tablet or, or a laptop. So I looked online before uh, buying this and of course, um, well not of course, but the review said, especially on reputable sites, negative a con was battery life and people were saying, oh no, it's not as quoted and the battery life just simply isn't there. But um, coming from a MacBook, bring that up again, but coming from a MacBook, it was quoted a 10 hour battery life. Now I'm not sure of the exact capacity of the, of the battery on, on a MacBook Pro particularly, but um, 
you can get 10 hours out of it if you try, if, you, if you're careful, if you don't use screen brightness on full, or when you don't need it, when you don't use the back of the keyboard, when you don't need it, and so on and so forth, if you reduce your volume uh, as necessary, use headphones instead, then you can, um, you can uh, get 10 hours out of it just about. Now on this, I actually looked it up and the capacity is 3140 milliamps. And that's not very much at all, because considering my phone has um, 3,700, it's an aftermarket battery, um, but by default it has 3,200, so 3,200 milliamps, which is higher than that by 60 milliamps. And um, considering how much less power it uses, uh, it's quite, it's quite, um, it's not very impressive at all from from um, the laptop's point of view. Uh, but actually, um, let's talk about real world usage. If you're careful, and if you're um, if if you use your only the programs that you need when you need them, as in you don't keep Photoshop open in the background, you don't keep After Effects open in the background, you don't keep your 3D uh, you know Autodesk software whatever it is open in the background. If you don't keep all your uh, programs open at once, which is something I don't do personally, but I know a lot of people who uh, use laptops uh, can, you can find yourself doing very easily. If you don't do that, then uh, your CPU usage isn't that bad, and you you'll find yourself being able to get about five hours out of it. And um, it's quoted at up to six hour battery life, and I find that you can get five hours if you try. But if you're if you're not careful, if you put your full screen brightness, you put your you know your sound on full, you're using ten tabs open, and you know different windows and whatever, it, it will drain your battery life pretty pretty quickly, and and, and you it'll, um, it'll just go like that. Um, of course, this is reasonably new at this time, so. Uh, the battery is going to be a lot better than it will be after a few months, uh, you know, a year or two of using it. But uh, then again, you can uh, replace the battery then when it deteriorates to a point where the, the performance is dramatically reduced. But as of now, yeah, the battery is okay for me. Um, I don't particularly go on very long journeys, and if I do need to, I'll just charge it up before I go and just be uh, efficient when I'm using it. So that's 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 that really for. In terms of battery life, and um, yeah, it's it's not uh, it's not that bad uh, as people have been saying. I wouldn't say it's great, but you know, it's it's average. It's an average laptop battery, in my opinion. And so we come to the final part of the review, um, and we're going to discuss um, general performance and overview, and some of my thoughts and opinions, and finally some concluding. Um, including statements uh, about this um, device. So, basically, in terms of performance, um, let me just get it, get it straight. That this is my second my second machine. This is my main machine behind me. This is my custom built PC, which I use uh, every day almost. It is a uh, you know a Intel Core i5 for a 3570K, uh, overclocked to 4.5 ish gigahertz. It's a powerful machine. Doing all my video editing, all my gaming, etc. It's all done on that. Um, and everything else was made done. This is because I am going to the sixth form next year, or college, or whatever you want to call it, uh, next year, and I need uh, a laptop for you know uh, all my work I'm going to be doing outside the house and you know on work experience or whatever it is. So I need I need that um, for that purpose, and so therefore it's not it's not the machine that I'll be doing everything else on. Um, that being said, I have used uh, Photoshop, Illustrator, After Effects, Premiere Pro, Autodesk softwares like Maya, etc. on here, and they work pretty pretty nicely. Um, brings on to the next question: Is it okay for gaming? Not really. I haven't I haven't used uh, any games as such, any proper 3D games, but I don't think it would be because it's not a gaming laptop. It uses Intel uh, HD graphics, so CPU graphics. So you know some of your lighter games may be, but it's not a gaming laptop, and it will um, probably get very warm if you try to game on it, um, yeah, intense intensely game on it. But no, it's not designed to be a gaming laptop either. So no complaints there as such because I wouldn't be doing any gaming on it um, very much. Um, is do you think? Uh, do I think it's worth? Um, yeah, it's been worth me getting because. Um, the feature that stood out to me was, uh, you know, it was a two-in-one and Windows 8.1, you know, and it was it was on sale as well, as the fact that my criteria was Intel Core i3 or above. Um, I didn't look at AMD, but yeah, I probably should have considered that as well. But um, 
Yes, I think it, uh, it's it's uh, it's good for me, and but that's because my work is pretty specific, as in my workflow, the way I handle um, my work is quite specific. Um, not specific, as in it's it's the least it's the less common way of doing things is that you get things done one one by one. You don't have lots of things lots of things running because that affects the performance on a device like this, uh, and it uh, quite dramatically does. I mean. Multitasking it doesn't handle it too well. Um, it's okay, but it's it's not, it's not uh, great. It will start to overheat. Uh, not overheat, but get very warm. When I say overheat, um, it's, it's, it doesn't overheat. If it would, to, if it were to overheat, um, I haven't experienced it yet, but it would probably shut down. So um, yeah, I mean, it's I suppose it, it's it's good if you have a, a specific workflow. If you're someone who likes to get things one thing one thing done at a time, then it's good. For someone who finds yourself with you know ten windows open at the same time, just doing things bit by bit, then it's not ideal, to be honest. And you're looking at a more sort of higher end machine uh, with a um, better processor. Um, when I say better processor, this processor is good, but um, it's not the best for multitasking. And uh, it's not all about the processor, of course. Uh, the other things that go with it, eight gigabytes of RAM, which is sufficient for all the work that I've been doing. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to say some final final comments on it. Um, it is worth it. I'm glad I got it. It suits suits my um, what I do. Um, and would I recommend it? Um, as I've said, um, it's not that simple. If your workflow is as I've said, then yes, it's a it's a good it's a good choice. Um, I wouldn't get it as your as a main main computer because it. Performance-wise, it, it's it's not quite there, and uh, especially if you're into uh, your more graphics and gaming side of it, it's not you know, it's not a gaming laptop. Um, but as as a you know as a machine, or if you if you if you're not really interested in doing that sub, uh, doing that type of thing, it is worth it. I would get it. And um, in terms of performance, I would rate it quite highly. Possibly you know a seven, uh, seven is probably good. Um, Design, I do like the design of it, but the build quality could be a little bit better. So you know, again, the sort of seven-ish, and out of ten, of course. And um, yeah, overall, you know, it's seven, I guess, because that's what it is: design and performance. Portability comes under design, and you know, so on and so forth. So it's it's good. I mean, it's not perfect, um, but I think you'll struggle to find a laptop that is, and it, it is. Um, it's down to you. It's down to you know. Do you do you want the features? And for me, the feature that being a laptop and a tablet that that stood out to me, and that's why I got it. Um, and so, as a tablet, it's good, and it's sort of an original experience, if you like, for me, because I haven't actually owned a tablet before, so um, it's, it's it's quite good, um, and it's quite quite nice to use. And then as a laptop, it's it's pretty good as well. So uh, I think that just about wraps it up. Uh, I'll leave links to everything uh, I've discussed down below. And I hope that was helpful uh, in uh, informing your decision as to whether to buy this or not. Um, yeah, so that's about it. So like like it if you liked it. Um, leave a comment telling me what you thought, any improvements for my channel, for my videos. And please do check out the channel and subscribe uh, for uh, tech reviews and for um, gaming simulation. And, so on and so forth. Uh, thank you very much for watching, I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you again next time.